All right, we are going to begin our prayer in Psalms 1 this afternoon. Hallelujah, Lord, have your way on today. Psalms 1, blessed is the man that walketh not the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of the sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scoffer. But his desire is in the law of the Lord, and in his law, all death is day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His least also shall not live And whatsoever he yieldeth shall prosper. Wow, that's a promise, guys. <laughs> the ungodly are not so. But our life is the chat which the wind is not the Therefore, the ungodly shall be in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. May the Lord add. A blessing to the hearer and doer of his word. Ooh, that was good on today. All right. I'm calm. I'm cool. I'm collective. Y'all should be used to my animated self. So, hallelujah. Get used to it. <laughs> Purposes of the Bible studies. <laughs> ah, it's for provoking, for staring. For exposing, renewing, reproof, resuscitation, restoring, ex, um, edification, exhortation, correction, rebuke, rebuilding, destroying, training, equipping, sharpening, deliverance, growth, setting, order, development, not fostering excuses sifting and the lord is giving me um not so much giving me but the holy spirit is having me um uh, uh, uh dive into differences with words like uh the difference between explaining and excuses the, how to do, differentiate between the two because there is a difference so acceleration renouncing encouragement healing forgiveness manifestations exhibiting authentic christian living testing demonstration of power operating in signs and wonders the lord's way of course becoming intimate with and in truth activation working walking i'm sorry in kingdom mindset and operation challenging mindsets and traditions that contradict the ways and statues and law of the Lord, shaking of our foundation, accountability, reigniting, tearing down demonic strongholds, spiritual house cleaning. And we have to understand that when we clean what we have to do after, we have to maintain. I got to tell you something. I'm telling them I hate dusting. Oh, yeah, I got that out. I hate it. <laughs> I will clean any and everything else, but golly gee, when it comes to that dusting, I don't know why I got resistance to it, but I do. But we got to maintain our cleaning naturally and spiritually. Transparency, demonstration of the love of Christ, accuracy, submission, and I'm going to add to submission, um, submission yielding and surrendering they all are they all go hand in hand 
with each other. Um, repentance, uh, separation, the Lord led separation, pushing, birthing, conviction, and returning fear and honor back to the Lord, to God be the glory on that. A few uh, house cleaning things before uh, Prophetess uh, Latte comes forth on today. Uh, the Lord wants me to address this again. I have addressed it before, but he wants me to address it again. These Bible study gatherings are not minds, people. They're not Carolyn's. They're not Carol's. They're not minds. It's been referred to by a few people for various reasons uh, as my Bible study. It is not my Bible study because I got to tell you something. I would love to keep sleeping. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Sleep, you know. Um, it's not mine. Yes, he has caused me to be steward. And I have, um, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, uh, placed these Bible studies under the um, pastoral and apostleship of the Millers. You know, so that we are not out here just flapping our wings all by ourselves without a covering, right? Because people, will, well, who are you under? Well, who who's your leader? You know, who are you disciplined and submitted and submitting all that? Well, here you go, the Millers, <laughs> Apostle, Apostle, and Randy Miller is this ministry's calling covering. Amen. They so gracious, uh, uh, prayed about it, you know, and got back to me about that because I want to do everything decently and in order. Hallelujah. And if they want to share about that a little later on, uh, they can do that. I have stated and have attempted to correct that mindset that these Bible studies are mine. Uh, this correction seems to be needed and addressed again. The Lord directed and instructed me to do these Bible studies at the end of uh, October of 2023. He has positioned me just as steward. He's the boss. I am not the boss, guys, because whatever he speaks through me or through you all, he is speaking to us all collectively and individually. Amen. No one is exempt from whatever the Lord says or however he moves. We are our subject to what he is doing. The Lord calls this gathering church. And I believe um, I mentioned that last Saturday. He said, this is church. And he has full range in this here church to do what he wants to do. I will not resist. I will not um, rebel. You know, I will not be defiant. I will not fight. Because at the end of the day, people, the Lord's going to do what the Lord's going to do, whether we want him to do it or not. So he's looking for a place where he can put his name and seal it with his seal. Amen. And I am grateful that he is he has blessed us with that. Nothing that we did of ourselves, but is what he wanted to do. It's a place of, 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 of protection for those who are coming out of these four wall buildings, slaughterhouses, where the Lord has left a long time ago. So they need a place to go to, to hear his undeviated, substituted, mixed word, his undulterated, raw word. Amen. So to God be the glory on that. Two points the Lord wanted me to address uh, today. And I did let, um, Prophetess Latay, no, and I did, I do recall mentioning this to you guys, I believe in January, that there may be times where the Lord may want me to navigate before the person sharing comes forth. So that's what I'm doing. Um, two things he wants me to address. One, familiar spirits. Uh, he said, there are still some listening to familiar spirits imitating the Lord. So, okay, Lord, what do you, what do you, what do you, What's, what's going on? Okay, familiar spirits imitating the Lord, but are seducing you to follow another way. 
because St. John 14, 6 tells us, Jesus says that I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man can come unto my father except they come through me. Another thing the Lord said is, is the spirit emulates emulation so i said okay let me let me look this up lord let me look up this uh emulation 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 this spirit looks like acts like sounds like performs like the things of the lord it can only copy because it's impure it 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 it, it, it can bring nothing but impurity And it seduces us to think that, oh my God, this is the Lord. Because it has some truth attached to it. That's the scary thing. It has some light, glimmer of light attached to it. But if our discernments are not um, keen on point and sharpened, we will be seduced and tricked into following a way that is not the way. Okay, emulation, the act of attempting to equal or excel in quality or actions, rivalry, desired of superiority, attended with effort to obtain to and genu gen generally in a good sense, or an attempt to equal or excel others in that which is praiseworthy without the desire of depressing others romans uh it says romans 11 in a bad sense a striving to equal or do more than others to obtain carnal favors or honor contest contention strife competition rivalry accompanied with a desire of depressing another so the whole root and seed of this spirit is to keep you from keeping your eyes stayed on the Lord. To rationalize things, especially after the Lord has already set a particular order, just like Satan did in the garden with Eve. The Lord said, there are, there's a tree that you are not to eat. Because the day that you eat it, you shall die. So Satan comes along and says, has God said you shall surely? makes you have that question mark well did i really hear the lord so i just want to encourage us and i just want to share that this is not just for us there are other people that watch these bible studies who are struggling with hearing the voice of the lord what does it sound like um how uh, can you discern between my voice the lord's voice and another's voice, the Lord's voice will 100% coincide with his written word. 110% people. One hundred and ten percent. I'm learning to mute when I blow my nose and 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 spittle. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> the next thing is the Lord says that some of us are harboring. People are holding and hiding resentment and bitterness. And I said, "Okay, Lord, what are you what are you what are you trying to say? What are you doing here?" He said, "Yes, tell my people they need to search their hearts for a spirit of resentment and bitterness. And I said, okay, people are holding and hiding resentment. Husbands and wives, wives and husbands, children and parents, parents and children, vice versa. 
what whatever the past incidents that happened in the past you just can't seem to let it go and it comes up you see that's the thing about things that are dormant things that are dormant do not always remain dormant it will have its time will it will peek its ugly head out resent and I had to look that up. So I said, resent, feel bitterness or indignation at of a circumstance, action, or person. A synonyms, feel uh, aggrieved at or about, feel bitter about, grudge, be annoyed at about, be angry at about, be resentful of, dislike, be displeased at or about, be grudged. Feel jealous, uh, feel envious, uh, take something ill, be offended by, take a miss. Sometimes we can do things to each other and not realize that deep down in our belly, there is a spirit of resentment. And we don't understand why we can't get past a certain thing. And we say, well, dang, I've I for, I forgiven them. And I, I thought I'd let it go with Lord saying there is a root. Mm -hmm. You can touch at the branches all you want to, but that does not deal with the root of the issue. And of course, he always gives his word. And I love the Lord because he's all that in a bag of chips. Yeah, yes, I love me some chips. <laughs> and so I'm just going to give you the chapters. You can read it on your own time. Uh, the workings of this uh, resentment is bitterness is very dangerous because you're borderlining into a spirit of witchcraft, a spirit of idolatry, and a spirit of sorcery. Yeah, yeah. Romans 3, 10 through 18 talks about our mouths. You can look that up yourself. Acts 8, 1 through 24 talks about Simon. He was a worker of sorcery and he had a root of bitterness. We got to watch it, people. Colossians 3, 17 through 19, the word and its deeds. We have to understand these things. Um, have roots, you know, they come out and they have deeds and fruits and we're operating with an undercurrent. Mm -hmm, thank you, Holy Spirit. An undercurrent of resentment and bitterness. And we wonder why we have clashes in relationships. Husbands, resentful of wives, secretly. Well, wife, husband, did I do something to you? No, I'm good. Check yourself. Wise resentment in, in, in against your husband. Check yourself. And believe me, the Lord was talking to me too. I'm not exempt from this word. Um, you know, something uh said, something done, something secret that have we have not let go. Resentment from parents to children. Are you resentful with your child for a particular reason? Pa children to parents. Are you resentful? Are you holding resentment in your heart, in your pit concerning a parent? You've got to let it go. It will eat you alive. And that fruit is so insidious because it entwines itself into other things in your life. Hebrews 12, 14 through 17 talks about the root of bitterness. James 3, 5 through 12 and 14 sweets and bitter water coming from the same fountain. Are you for real? That taints everything. Bitterness and resentment taints, taints everything we put our hands to.
And it could be so little. Start off so tiny. Most seeds are tiny, right? Until it starts to grow. Isaiah 5:20. Woe unto them that call good. E I'm sorry, evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Let's not pretend and 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 mull over bitterness, resentment. No, no, that's not what it is. Check just just check yourself. Just to make sure so that when you put your hands to the plow, you are not plowing in deceit and lies and mixture. We are responsible for what we give other people when it's not done in purity. So when you are telling your story to somebody else, then all of a sudden, that, that, that feeling you get, that full feeling you get when you're telling that story, because now the memory of that event is there. And now how you felt about the situation is coupled with it. And then you went full blown like it happens yesterday. That's how you know <laughs> when there's healing needs to be there. So I just want to encourage all of us to, uh, and you know, uh, envy is a, uh, one of the works of the flesh, tools of Satan. We, we've got to uh, be mindful that we do not lend our members as tools of Satan. So I just want to encourage you all today to search us, search ourselves to make sure that we don't have any hidden reason. And you know, the thing about it, one thing I believe, was it what the one was it, it, talking about the husbands? Uh, the husbands are to deal with their wives. Wives were supposed to submit to the husbands. Oh, it must be Ephesians. Matter of fact, let me just go to it real quick because I thought that was interesting. And it, that hit me like a ton of bricks. I said, okay, Lord, forgive Thou me. Ephesians 4 30. Man, marriage ain't for the weak. Let me just tell you, marriage, man, man, marriage, man. No, it's not this one, but okay, 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and even speak, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. It's talking about husbands. Come on, Carolyn. I thought I wrote that. Ah, it was in the Amplified, I think. Yes, Pastor Miller. Pastor Miller. Your mic's you're you're muted. 
Oh, that was that Ephesians five twenty two and twenty three. Hold on, so let me get to submit there. yourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands. Yes, that is that. Yes, that is that is correct, sir. Could you read that for me? Uh, twenty one says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church. He is the savior of the body. And like Christ, so let the wives, Randy. Uh, there, therefore, as a church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water of the word. Amen. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Okay. Really? Okay. I know I read it, but um. I know that I read it. The husband is the head of the wife in Christ. Therefore, as the church, get things. Huh. Anywho, I will find it as uh, today goes on. But um, we need to be mindful of how we treat one another. Um, husbands and wives, parents and children, children and parents, vice versa. Um, because we're going to give an account for it. We are going to give an account for it. So on that note, oh, one more thing about the consecration. Okay, so the consecration information for May will be given on April 21st, 20, mm, dyslexia, on April 12th to those who have chosen to participate. These who receive the information are asked not to share this with others. We will we all have been given plenty of time to decide whether or not to participate. There will be prayer each Saturday, each Saturday for everyone. After the prayer, those who have not committed to the consecration will be locked off to allow the remaining of us to um, continue on with the consecration because there are some things that we're going to do um, together online. Um, so if you were wondering, when I haven't forgotten to give out the information, the Lord hasn't released me to do it. So that will be done um, in April uh, the 12th to give you plenty of time to do um, some preparations and things like that. So I turn it now over to uh, Prophetess Lette. Good afternoon, everybody. Oh, Y'all have to excuse me. I have Jax. <laughs> He won't get off my lap, so excuse me. He also has his iPad. I tried to turn it down as much as I could. But anyways, today my topic is on abusing God's grace. Do we truly understand what God's grace is? Can anyone give me the definition of grace without looking it up? Hello? No cheating. All right. Grace, undeserved favor, unmerited favor, a gift from God. Without God's grace, none of us would be here. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, if everyone can turn to that and let me know when you have gotten there. All right. Everyone's good? All right. All right. Could someone read Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, please? 
For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Eight and nine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. A gift. We've done nothing for it, not of our own works, but yet we all have abused God's grace at some point in our lives. How you ask? One example is a lot of us, a lot of these so-called men, women of God, honestly, God with the lowercase g, but I digress. Uh, church leaders preach on grace, but yet their hearts are far from God, capital G, doing ungodly things behind closed doors, scenes, even though the Lord can see them pride and deceit of the heart of oneself believing that he doesn't see then preach about grace to justify their foolishness they say as long as you repent god will forgive you basically teaching grace is a license to sin another example giving a feel-good message to keep church members which means more money for them they know they're leading the congregation to the road of destruction. But because the pastor or church leader looks good outwardly, speak with authority and eloquence, a gift of gab, which I call charm. When deep inside they're raging as wolves, that, that's what they are saying. Sounds good to your spirit and soul because of your prideful and de deceitful heart. And not allowing the Holy Spirit to show you what this person is saying is not of the Lord. Truth mixed with lies is still a lie. Most people don't want a message to pierce their hearts because they still want to live a sinful life. So they will follow and listen to a church leader that will tickle their spirit or soul. Another example. I believe in God. Go to church every Sunday. Even on holidays, Mother's Day, Christmas, Easter. I read my Bible, certain scriptures when it's convenient, used for manipulation and or trying to sound deep or only open the Bible on Sundays at church, but yet will cuss someone out in a heartbeat. Will fix your lips to say, you lucky I'm saved after all of that. Clubbing, fornicating, etc. Another example, once saved, always saved. There's no such thing. You can't put Jesus aside whenever you feel like it or pick him up whenever you need him. Jesus is not a toy. You meaning we play too much. In case anyone doesn't know, Jesus is, is God, the Father's ultimate gift. Can everyone turn to St. John 3.16? Can everyone let me know when they get to St. John 3.16? Oh, okay. All good? Okay. Can someone please read that for me? St. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank you. So also, is that not grace? Jesus is grace. Honestly, we don't deserve Jesus. Without Jesus and grace, we can't be saved. Can we all also turn to 1 John 2, 1 and 2? Oh, let me know if I'm, go if I'm going too fast.
first time first john two and one and two can someone read that for me when they get it please My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Thank you. Um, does anybody have anything to say before I continue? Okay. All right. Is there not also grace, an advocate, who is Jesus Christ, the ultimate gift, an undeserved gift? And if we can all turn to Romans 5, 12, 5, 15 through 21. So can someone read that Repeat. for me? I'm sorry, Repeat. it's a, sorry, it's Romans chapter five. Five, okay. Yes, First, verses 15 through 21. Okay, Rand, go ahead. I still haven't got it. I don't have it. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abound unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one's man offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one's man disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abound, grace did much more abound that as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you. Yes. So once again, free gift, undeserved, undeserved. An example would be your parents buy you a new car, even though, even though you're, you're flunking in school, undeserved gift is undeserved and you have the nerve to still act up and do what you want to do we are entitled and ungrateful creatures who do we think we are be not deceived god's grace has a limit and if we all could read uh, i will actually read romans 1 18 through 32 i'm going to read it in the amplified version Because God's grace does have a limit in Romans. Romans actually have, um, will show us. Sorry. 
So Romans 1, 18 through 32, you can still follow in the King James Version, but I'm just going to read it in the Amplified Version. For God's holy wrath and indignation are revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and righteousness of men who in their wickedness repress and hinder the truth and make it inoperative. For that which is known by God is evident to them and made plain in their inner consciousness because God himself has shown it to them. For ever since the creation of the world, his invisible nature and attributes, that is, his eternal power and divinity, have been made intelligible and clearly discernible in and through the things that we have that have been made his handiworks. So men are without excuse altogether, without any defense or justification because when they knew and recognized him as god they did not honor and glorify him as god or give him thanks but instead they became futile and godless in their thinking with vain imaginations foolish reasoning and stupid speculations and their senseless minds were darkened claiming to be wise they became fools professing to be smart they made simpletons of themselves and by them, the glory and majesty and excellence of the immortal God were exchanged for and represented by images resembling mortal man and birds and beasts and reptiles. Therefore, God gave up to them in the lust of their own hearts to sexual impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, abandoning them to the degrading power of sin. Because they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So be it. For this reason, God gave them over and abandoned them to vile affections and degrading passions. For the women exchanged their natural function for an unnatural and abnormal one. And the men also turned from natural relations with men, with women and were set ablaze, burning out, consumed with lust for one another. Men committing shameful acts with men and suffering in their own bodies and personalities, the inedible consequence and penalty of their wrongdoing and going astray, which was their fitting retribution. And so since they did not see fit to acknowledge God or approve of him or consider him worth the knowing, God gave them over to a base and condemned mind to do things not proper or deceit but loathsome loathsome i believe in the king james version it meant uh reprobate mind until they were filled permeated and saturated with every kind of unrighteousness iniquity grasping and covetous greed and malice they were full of envy and jealousy murder strife deceit and treachery ill will and cruel ways they were secret backbiters and gossipers slanderers hateful to and hating god full of insolence, arrogance, and boasting, inventors of new forms of evil, disobedient and undutiful to parents. They were without understanding, conscienceless and faithless, heartless and loveless and merciless. Though they are fully aware of God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve to die, they not only do them themselves, but approve and applaud others who practice them. So does that not also say that they're abusing God, that's also a way of abusing God's grace. You got preachers and pastors who are actually doing exactly what I said earlier. Um, so in that God's grace has a limit. So therefore we need to be more and self-aware in how we treat the grace of our heavenly father. And that is the end of my message. I hope I didn't go too fast and it wasn't, um, I hope it, it helped you guys. Thank you. Wow. Uh, <laughs> okay, sis. So you you talking about abusing grace. So let me just <laughs> Jesus. Oh Father, I knew I supposed to leave this out. So Let's see, was it earlier this week the Lord gave me the fact that we abuse grace and we want to pass. We use grace as a pass, stamp as a pass. Oh, well, I'm under grace. So I'm just gonna, we're just gonna let this slide. And and oh, you know, don't judge me. I'm under grace. I'm going to let 
this slide. And of course, I can't find it now. Okay, I'm just going to let that one go. So, and one of the things um, in one of the series the Lord is having me um, do, um, one of the things he said was in his word that we are not to grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, who do you know preaches that off the pulpit? Because we think and we we just allow everything is permissible and permissible in the body of Christ. There's no distinction anymore from obey from things clean and unclean. Ephesians 4:30 says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. That's a capital S, not a small S, whereby ye are sealed. Unto the day of redemption. Why do you think that even in the Gospels, where he says, if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, there's no forgiveness for you? But we just want to stamp everything. We're under grace. We're abusing grace. Ma'am, that's exactly what the Lord gave me. We are abusing grace and we are using it in the way of maliciousness of hiding and covering our sin without the act of repentance and we think we are okay because of grace wow Lord have mercy on us. And you know, another thing, someone, I think it was Apostle Miller prayed and she prayed about uh, mercy. You know, Lord have mercy, have mercy. And that set with me. And it set with me because for some reason it bothered me. And I didn't understand why it bothered me. So then the Lord took me to Matthew 5. And you know, he shed some light on mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So we're asking for things that we ourselves don't even do. If you're merciful, then yeah, go ahead and embrace that mercy. But if you're not, you're not going to get it. And we only but have so much time, as you already said, prophetess, to abuse this free gift, this unmerited favor that we didn't pay nothing for. Yes, that spirit of entitlement, that's something else he's been giving me revelation on. We are so entitled. Are you for real? Don't nobody got to do nothing for you. But we think we owe something because of a position or rank or who we think we are. Mm, that's where pride comes in. That's where, and, and, and what's the counter opposite of pride? Humility. Oh, we under grace is wonderful. Yes. Uh, Romans 6 1 says, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Jesus. And you are right, prophetess. It starts from the pulpit. And you want to know why the leaders don't preach certain things to their petitioners, church goes, because they themselves are guilty of the exact same thing. That's why they can't preach on it or teach on it, because they're guilty of going to nightclubs and using uh, drugs, illegal drugs. and other debauchery of things. There is no fear of God in the body of Christ anymore. That's why he says in Malachi, if I be thy father, where is my honor? We just 
go out about our business. Oh, but we under grace. We under grace. We under grace. <sighs> yeah, you're going to look up and your eyes is going to be in the pit. Yeah, it is because you was under grace. Yep, sent you right to hell. What you talking about? You better read that book. You better read the book. And stop adopting this Jesus of the world that this world is peddling because it's sending people to hell. Once saved, always saved goes absolutely out the window. Because you floating on grace <laughs> with no accountability, no repentance, no deliverance from your evil ways. And as I said before, salvation is freedom from something to something. So if you're doing the exact same thing you claim, You've been set free from, you received Jesus, but yet you're doing the same thing. Honey, that's not salvation. You're saved from something to something. You're delivered from something to something. You are redeemed from something to something. At the end of the day, as she read in the Amplified Virgin, God's going to turn you over to your lust. To your reprobate self. Go and do that. Well, unfortunately, dear hearts, it's in the book. Lord, I pray that the fear of the Lord would come back into the body of Christ and that we would uh, embrace it with full arms, full hearts, our full self. You know, when your daddy came home, your mama said, all she had to say, I'm going to tell your daddy. When your daddy come home, I'm going to tell your dad, boy. No, don't tell daddy. Don't tell. Because that was a reverent fear. Because they knew with daddy, there was going to come some authority, right? Some discipline when daddy has to get involved. Nowadays, child, people are like, man, I'll slap my dad. He ain't got no power. Man. He ain't the boss of me. There's no respect. There ain't no respect. Isaiah 59, 1 through 4 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Once saved, always saved, goes out the window. Your iniquities have separated you from you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he cannot hear once saved always saved goes out the window but no we want the name it and claim it uh what is it baskin robbins how many flavors of ice cream they have right that's what we want we have itching ears for seducing you know, we 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 want that good. We want the name and the claim it. We want the run down the aisle and run back to get your blessing. That's the kind of flavor. Not this, not here. This is not the kind of flavor here. This kind of flavor is going to be one of um, you know, let's get our house in order. Let's repent. You know, if a message is not bringing you to repentance, check that message. If it's not directing you to the way of the Lord, check that message. That's how you know it's a familiar spirit. If it's not telling you about Jesus, but telling you about you, do more of you, fulfill more of your lust, honey, that's a seducing spirit. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered perverseness. And you know, yes, Holy Spirit, I understand. He said, you know, uh, people always say, well, the, the, the masturbation is not in the, the Bible. That word masturbation is not in the Bible. But here, your fingers work iniquity. 
<laughs> your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity. They speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. That sounds like a conception and bursting to me. But God won't do that. <laughs> Child, you better read that book. And then you have those religious people. Yes, those spiritual scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees. Well, that's just legalism with your carnal self. You know. Get the mind of Christ, sir. Get the mind of Christ, ma'am. Christ came in the fullness of the word and his religious people of that day hated him. How you gonna hate somebody doing miracles and casting out demons? How is that a threat to you? Because he did it by the book? And it wasn't a form or fashion to be seen of men? Mm -hmm. Girl, you start, let me tell you. Prophetess, you might have to do another one. Yeah, you will. <laughs> Not might. <laughs> Get yourself ready, girl. <laughs> Get yourself ready. Prophetess to God. Be the glory. The Lord is challenging us to do better. He's challenging us to be better. Because for him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him that is sin. I'm going to ask Brother uh, Mark if he has anything to share on today. Uh, sorry, wasn't on video for earlier, but I had other things I had to get done. So, but I have been listening to everything, and thank you, Tay, for your message today. It touched a lot of, a lot of parts of me. So. I thank you and thank you everybody that's here today. So it's pretty much all I need to say right now. Evangelist. <laughs> Evangelist loves saying that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God bless everybody. Um, I just really enjoyed the word. And like you said, if it doesn't, if it, if the word does not touch you, if it does not cause you to look deeper into yourself, then you need to check check it. And it, every word has really caused me to look deeper into myself. So I thank God for, for all the word. And I just, I wanted to say um, this, th it doesn't have anything to do with today's um, um, Bible study, but um, I wanted to ask everyone on here to forgive me because there was, um, I think, I can't remember exactly when it was, but I had talked to a prophetess about it. Um, there was a time when she had asked me some questions and I got an attitude and you could see, see the attitude flaring up in me um and i just wanted to apologize but um like she said before you know you don't know to ask for deliverance of something until it flares up until it it um manifests itself and then you can ask for forgiveness and you can ask for deliverance and um that's what i have done so um Again, I apologize for that, and um, I just hope everyone accepts my apology. God bless. Amen. Uh, I'll Amen. The Millers, because Nathaniel's camera and mic's not working. So, uh, Miller. Go ahead, the prophet. I mean, Pastor Miller. Uh, yes. Uh, um, you were saying, uh, Carol's. Uh, um, going it's going from two and uh 
I, I've been uh, looking at this scripture and uh, just kind of uh, been hanging in my mind in uh, Matthew 25, uh, 6. It says, uh, the last part of that verse, it says, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. And so when it says go out, that means that we're coming yeah. out of something to yeah. something. So we're coming out of that world, that world system, that Babylonian system, mm -hmm. and we're going into him, the new Jerusalem. Amen. Mm -hmm. out and to, you know, mm -hmm. this is something that's been on my mind, you know, that scripture just kind of hung with me in Matthew uh, 25, 6. Amen. That's good, sir. That's good, sir. Apostle Miller. I, I just wanted to say I'm very blessed. Very blessed. Prophetess, do you hear me? Oh, thank you for turning the camera, sir, because he was hiding. He was hiding. <laughs> I know that spirit. Yeah, I know it. No, Rick, uh -huh. always thank sets you, Pastor Miller. I appreciate it. Picks it up like <laughs> Evangelist. Uh, um, no prophetess, uh, star, uh, Tay, sweetheart. Yes. Be encouraged. Do you hear me? Be encouraged. Thank you. Let your confidence keep going. As you sit in quietness and in stillness, you will see that the Lord is your confidence. Amen. He will fill you with the word. He would illuminate the word to your mind. You will hear and you'll be at peace. If somebody is yelling in your ear, guarantee that's not God. All right. I just want to share with you that that's not the Holy Spirit because God doesn't yell at us. You know, he doesn't yell in our ear and he doesn't over talk us. He doesn't. He sits quietly and he waits lets you do all your talking until you talk yourself out just about and then the holy spirit comes to bring a comfort and then he'll blow you a kiss i don't know if i ever shared that with you but believe me that god does dispense his throne angels to give us a kiss from him and that time we're at our lowest point sweetheart just be encouraged with your word. Just keep doing what you're doing. Things that you hear, you'll know that it's of God because God speaks of himself. He speaks of his love. He shows you his spirit and his peace. Anything that is not of peace, anything that's not of love, anything that's accusing, because it's the enemy that is the accuser of the brethren. These things, we know, and we can try the spirit by the spirit, you know, and you, you will always come out ahead. You will always come out ahead. God speaks and just, 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 just do your thing. Be obedient. Listen to your instructor. Be willing to be taught. Be humble to receive. And even if you get rebuke, go ahead and cry those tears until you can't cry no more. But after all that, you have received it and allow the word of God to work in you because God said he will work in us both to will and what to do of his good pleasure. Okay, sweetheart? you got a lot of teachers around you. You really do. Mom, Auntie Carol, you got a lot of teachers. Nathaniel, you got a lot of teachers. You and Daniel can suit the breeze because, you know, y'all are, y'all see these things, you know, you see what's going on around you, you know. So I just want you to stay, stay encouraged, sweetheart. Thank you. You are more than welcome. I turn it back over to you, ma'am, to close us out or do whatever it is the Lord will have you to do. Give me just, give me just a second. Yes, ma'am.
let's say I have one more question. What was the what was the name? What was the title of this? Uh abusing God's grace. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Because I need to post it. I'm gonna post it. Yeah, girl. <laughs> I hope it touched everyone because uh, it definitely that was something the Lord was was uh, dealing with me on as far as uh, abusing grace um, that feel good that message or you just doing something and you're like oh well or not having that understanding of what what God's grace really is because some people don't have an understanding of it and because the pastors and these preachers or church leaders are either they're not talking about it or they preach about it, but then it's like a justification. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and it kind of like bothered my spirit. And so that was not my original message actually. <laughs> so uh, I hope that it, it just touched all of uh, all of your hearts because it touched minds. It definitely was something that um, the Lord wanted me to put out. So. Thank you all for coming. Um, so we're about to end out in prayer. Um, dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this message for today. I thank you, Lord, for allowing us all, Lord, to see another day, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, for everything that you are doing in each of our lives, everything that you're going to do, and everything that you have already done and worked out, Lord, that we don't even know about, Lord. So I just thank you, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, for giving us all, Lord, the strength to get through another day, Lord. And I just plead the blood of Jesus over each and every last one of us, Lord, and over our family members, Lord. And I pray that you continue, Lord, to just have your way in our lives, Lord. Increase more and more in us, Lord, that we will decrease, Heavenly Father. And I just give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor, Lord. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Is your cat um, meowing? No. No, that was Jax. He's trying to, I, I locked my door. Because he's oh, running around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Your yeah. son is so cute. That is my godson. Okay. Oh, God, he is so cute. Thank you. <laughs> Joshua when he was little. Yes. Yeah. Godspeed, everyone. Have a blessed day. You too. See you later. All right. God bless. God People bless. Are God bless.